To start with, load the Maya project that you want to light. But before you begin lighting your scene, ensure you have a camera set up and that the renderer that you want to use is set. In this example, we'll be using V-Ray. So, let's open the HDR Light Studio connection shelf in Maya. If you don't see the HDR Light Studio connection shelf, ensure that the connection was installed correctly. The connection shelf opens and we can see the HDR Light Studio controls. This is where we will start HDR Light Studio. So let's press the start button. Because there is no lighting environment in our scene, we will be required to create a lighting environment that HDR Light Studio can attach to. We call this Image Space Lighting Hook or an IBO hook. Press OK to create a new environment that HDR Light Studio can hook into. HDR Light Studio is now starting while being hooked to the environment that we have just created and can control. Your interface should look something like this. If not, you can reset it by going to Window, Layout, Load, Default, Maya. Let's put HDR Light Studio to the side for a second. In the Outliner, if we click on the environment that we have created, in this case called V-Ray Light Dome 1, and go to the Attribute Editor to see its texture, we can see that it is using a temporary file provided by HDR Light Studio. This will change every time the lighting changes in HDR Light Studio and will keep Maya up to date with the latest lighting design. A HDRLS project data node has also been added and it stores the latest state of the HDR Light Studio lighting project within the Maya scene. Let's go back to HDR Light Studio. You will notice there are two render views. Render view Maya, V-Ray, and render view HDR Light Studio. We will use this one first, so let's press play. We have started interactive rendering in Maya. The resulting image is shown within the HDR Light Studio interface. Now's the time to make our first light. Click on the presets tab next to the light list to show the preset lights. In this panel we have a variety of preset lights that we can drag and drop onto our model. The light has been added to the lighting design that is reflecting where the light was dropped on the 3D model. This is because by default the light paint mode is set to reflection. We can see our new light in the light list we can also see the light added to the canvas here. And of course, the Maya environment has been updated to use the new live HDR IMAP from HDR Light Studio. The Maya V-Ray preview render is also updated and is using the new lighting. We can see that the light paint tool is active in the toolbar within the render view Maya V-Ray. We can use this tool to click on the 3D model to reposition our light. The light has moved on the HDR IMAP and the new HDR IMAP is sent to Maya for a preview render to update. This is a very interactive way of lighting your shot. However, if you find that there is a delay of more than a second or so after clicking to move your light and see the updated rendered result, the process will be slow and tedious. This is where the second render view comes handy. We can use HDR Light Studio's built-in renderer to speed up the lighting process. So let's press the play button and import. By default, this will mean that Maya exports its scene as a temporary alembic file which is loaded and rendered in this view. A simple shader is used to preview the light and reflections. It's important to ensure that the camera view in HDR Light Studio's render view matches with the Maya V-Ray render view. If you needed to open this view for a more interactive lighting experience, use this view for light paint where clicking and dragging is supported. It's really fast and interactive. If the Maya V-Ray render view is still so slow that it's of little benefit, use the pause and play button here to stop and resume rendering to produce test renders from time to time. So far, the light that we have created is on the HDR IMAP. With a single setting, this light can be removed from the HDR IMAP and created in 3D space in Maya, mapped with the HDR content from HDR Light Studio. Let's enable the Area Light checkbox in the Light Properties panel for the selected light. The light in the light list now gets a suffix, Area Light, and is in yellow, clearly showing which lights are Area Lights. Although this view hasn't changed much, 
The map that is shared with the render view in Maya doesn't include this light anymore. This light is now a 3D light that can be moved in space using the smart dolly slider to control its distance. We can still control the light by clicking on the model to position it just like any other light. Going back to Maya, we can see the HDRLS area lights node in the outliner, which contains all the area lights in the HDR light studio lighting design. So if we expand the node, click on the area light we have created and view its attributes, we can see that they have a texture that is coming from HDR Light Studio. Let's go back to HDR Light Studio. I can duplicate any of those lights by pressing Ctrl D whilst the light is selected. Press OK and I can position it someplace else. With a single click of a button, I can return any area light to the HDRI map by unchecking the area light checkbox under the light properties panel. And now they are part of the HDRI map again. If we go back to Maya, we can see that the area lights are no longer in the outliner. The HDRLS area lights node is now empty. Let's return to HDR Light Studio once again. The final step would be to press the HDR button from the toolbar on the left and render the high quality HDRI map file on disk. We do this because as of now, the HDRI map design in HDR Light Studio is shared with Maya as a low resolution image. So let's choose our resolution. If you had any area lights in your lighting design, you can choose the resolution for those here as well. And I think we're good. So let's click on browse and choose the file name and location of our final HDRI map. I will call this BMW HDR1. And press render. HDR Light Studio will now calculate the final high quality HDRI map and save it to disk. It will then tell Maya to use these new files on disk. Now, if we look at the environment, and its texture, we can see it's using that file from disk. At this point we can stop HDR Light Studio connection and save our Maya project. This scene is now lit and is using files on disk as the textures. This is like any other Maya scene and can be rendered. If we decide we want to edit the lighting we can do so by pressing start, choosing our hook, pressing OK and HDR Light Studio will restart. Its lighting project is embedded in the Maya scene, so when HDR Light CEO starts, it will load the project where we left off. If we press play in the render view Maya V-Ray again, we can see that the view is being lit with this lighting. We can make further changes, so let's say we change the colour of one of these lights. And now re-render our HDRI map. This time I will call it BMW HDR2. Save. Render. And now we'll be able to look at our environment's texture. And see that it's been updated to use our new file on disk. And we can stop the HDR Live Studio connection once more. And save our Maya project. This concludes the tutorial for how to use HDR Light Studio with Maya. Thank you for watching.